Back in April of 2022, Electric introduced the XP Lite foldable e-bike, which they plan on shipping within the next few weeks. Not long after this announcement, Electric decided to shake things up even more and is planning to release yet another new e-bike, the X Premium. Electric made the choice not to change the formula too much with the Lite. It seems to be a simplified, lighter, slightly scaled down version of their XP 2.0. However, with the X Premium, it seems that they're doing the opposite and are offering major improvements from what is available with the XP 2.0 and the light models. I'd even say a step up compared to what most other major e-bike companies have to offer in this price category. The X Premium is an upgraded foldable e-bike with a number of enhancements that would warrant a premium version in their own right, but Electric went even further beyond that and decided to throw out the geared hub motor that is pretty much standard on most economy e-bikes and instead added a powerful mid-drive motor. In this video, I wanted to compare this new X Premium model to Electric's flagship 2.0 to see what has been upgraded and if it's worth the extra cost. The two major changes that stand out are the motor and the batteries. For the most part, mid-drive motors are normally found on higher-end e-bikes, so a mid-drive motor in the economy e-bike market is rare. I'm excited to see Electric making the choice to add one on the X Premium. While I was gathering information for this video, I really struggled to find many similar models that could compare with the X Premium, since most other mid-drive e-bikes are typically at least $1,000 more than what the X Premium is priced at. The closest that I could find around the same price was the Ride One Up Prodigy. However, the Prodigy only has a 250 watt mid-drive motor, a 36 volt battery instead of a 48 volt and isn't foldable. Hardly a comparable option. If someone else knows of a major e-bike company that has a model similar to the X Premium and is around the same cost, please let me know down in the comments. I've been hoping that more companies would change things up and start putting different motors than the standard geared hub motor in their e-bikes. Not to hit on geared hub motors, they're relatively cheap, efficient, and easy to use but I feel more options are always welcomed. The XB 2.0 and the X Premium both use a 500 watt nominal and 800 watt peak motor, but since the 2.0 has a geared hub motor and the X Premium has a mid-drive, they deliver power in very different ways. Hub motors turn the rear wheel directly and are completely independent from the bike's drivetrain. They are great for most typical e-bike riders since there's really nothing you have to learn in order to use one. The motor simply pushes the bike forward whether the rider is pedaling or using the throttle. There's no real major change from how most people ride a regular bike. A mid-drive motor has many advantages and some minor disadvantages when compared to a hub motor, but I won't go into too much detail here. Mid-drive motors pull the drivetrain through the chain directly or through the chain ring. So when you are pedaling and you drop it into a lower gear to go up a hill, the mid-drive motor uses that same gear ratio to help you climb up faster and uses less power than a hub motor while doing it. Because of this, they do take some getting used to since the motors rely on the bike's main drivetrain to supply power. So the rider will have to be conscious of switching gears. However, this typically means mid-drives offer much more torque and have the ability to climb inclines much easier. So if you live in a region with a ton of hills and have struggled to ride up them with a typical geared hub e-bike, a mid-drive e-bike may be a better choice for you. Both the XP 2.0 and X Premium are class two and three capable. So a top speed of 20 to 20 miles per hour, depending on which you send it to. Class two will let you ride in most areas where standard pedal bicycles are allowed, while class three may encounter more limitations. Besides the motor, the other major upgrade that stands out on this X Premium is the addition of a second lithium ion battery. One of my biggest gripes about the XB 2.0 was the tiny 48 volt 9.6 amp hour integrated battery. The X Premium solves this problem by adding two 10.4 amp hour batteries, one that is designed to be integrated into the frame in a much better manner than the 2.0's integrated battery. The battery is easily accessible and does not require the bike to be folded to remove it like the 2.0 does while the second external battery pack is a more traditional design and is located behind the seat tube. These two batteries are connected in parallel, so they run simultaneously as a combined 20.8 amp hour battery, as opposed to draining them separately. Electric indicates that this battery motor combo is capable of up to 100 mile range using pedal assist one or 50 miles using throttle only. As you can imagine, this is much farther than the XP 2.0 single battery range of 45 miles using pedal assist or 20 miles using the throttle. Electric specifies that these range estimates are done in real world range tests with flat ground, 30 tire PSI, few starts and stops, and a total payload of 180 pounds. 
So if you're like me and you're over 180 pounds and do more than a few starts and stops, you'll get less range than what they state. There's a clear winner regarding the range between these two e-bikes since the X Premium has more than doubled the battery capacity and range of the 2.0. Both the XP 2.0 and the X Premium have the same 160mm brake rotors. However, the X Premium has upgraded hydraulic brakes. Hydraulic brakes provide better control and more stopping power, so they're usually seen as a much better option when compared to the mechanical brakes that the 2.0 is equipped with. I would have liked to see a larger brake rotor on the X Premium, but it's not a necessity and it's a cheap and easy upgrade if you decide to add one later on. Both the XP 2.0 and the X Premium come with a front fork oil suspension. However, Electric decided that the X Premium would have double the compression range than the 2.0s. The 2.0s fork offer 40 millimeters of travel, while the X Premiums have 80 millimeters, offering more shock absorption and a smoother ride, especially on bumpy trails. If you're riding on smooth streets, then you probably wouldn't notice a huge difference though. Coupled with the front fork suspension, the X Premium comes with 20 by 4 inch knobby treaded fat tires versus the 2.0's tires that have similar tread, however they lose an inch width-wise and are 20 by 3 inch. Some prefer fat tires on their e-bikes and some prefer thinner tires, so those can be a personal preference. While some e-bike companies make a folding model as a secondary option or something of an afterthought, Electric seems to be really sticking to the folding e-bike versatility. With the XP 2.0, Electric gave you the option of a high step or a step through version. However, the X Premium only comes in a step through option, which isn't a big deal for most. What may turn some off from the X Premium, however, is the added weight and size. Most of the additional weight can be attributed to the second battery, since both batteries weigh about 7 pounds each. The XP 2.0 weighs in at 64 pounds, which for a portable folding bike stretches the definition of portable as it is but the X Premium is 11 pounds heavier at 75 pounds total. For an e-bike in general, that isn't too bad. There are many heavier than 75 pounds, but if you're looking for portability and lightweight, then you may be better off with the 2.0 or even the XP Lite. Shorter riders should have similar experiences with the X Premium. With this step through frame on the X Premium, it has a standover height of 20 inches, which is pretty similar to the 2.0's 19 inches. The 2.0 high step comes in at 25 inches. As far as length goes, the X Premium is 74 inches long, which is 7 inches longer than the 2.0. Something to consider if you're trying to store your bike. Because the mid-drive motor is meant to be pedaled, most e-bikes that come equipped with one lack a throttle. The X Premium, however, does come with one standard, so riders that like to ride throttle only won't have a problem. Speaking of pedaling, the X Premium uses a torque sensor to measure how light or hard you are pedaling and supplies motor power accordingly as opposed to the 2.0 that uses a cadence sensor that is essentially an on-off switch for the motor attached to the pedals. Like most components, there are some that prefer one over the other, but torque sensors are generally seen as the more preferred type. While the tail light seems to be the same on both models, Electric added their premium headlight to the X Premium. It isn't a huge improvement, but it's worth noting. Most e-bike headlights are more of a check the box type of feature and don't provide much illumination in front of the bike. They are mostly good for letting others see you on the road as opposed to letting you see the road while you're riding. Another minor improvement is the rubber grips that come with the 2.0 have been replaced with the faux leather grips instead. I myself like rubber grips more than fake leather ones since they are more, well, grippy, but this is yet another personal preference. Those are most of the major and minor differences between the 2.0 and the new X Premium. Some other features haven't changed and can be found on both bikes, such as the large LCD displays that shows speedometer, odometer, battery and such. Both come with a rear rack standard at no additional cost. Front and rear metal fenders that match the color of the bike. A 7-speed drivetrain, and they come in the same color options, black and white. Now that we know the component differences between the X Premium and 2.0, let's talk about price. This one is harder to compare since there's such a difference between the two. All these prices are in US dollars and I'll be rounding up costs to make things simple. The XB 2.0 is a typical lower to mid-level e-bike with average quality components at $1,000. But the X Premium is marketed as a higher-end deluxe version at $1,800, almost double the cost. They share most of the same parts, just better quality type, and those prices add up. E-bike batteries are an expensive component and the X Premium has two. Mid-drive motors are also more expensive than geared hub motors. Hydraulic brakes, upgraded fork, 
premium headlight, etc. All of these improvements add up quickly, especially with the current component shortages causing the cost of bike parts to be raised dramatically. If we are comparing the XP 2.0 and the X Premium cost-wise, to get these two bikes as equal as possible, we'd have to throw in the additional price of a second battery for the 2.0, which would be an additional $300. And if you want to get nitpicky, you'd have to add in the additional cost of a premium headlight of $50. But since the 2.0 comes with a regular headlight, I won't factor in that. The price difference with the cost of the second battery added is $500, which is still a large chunk of cash, but less substantial than $800. If or when Electric decides to remove the pre-order special pricing of $1,800, I would assume they'd raise it up to $1,900 or even the full regular price of $2,000. It would be hard to recommend double the price for the average rider, but if you're looking for a premium ride, maybe worth the extra amount. When talking about price, I try to speak on the total cost that would go into purchasing. This usually includes the added accessories that the bike may be missing or something that your average rider may want that didn't come with the bike from the factory. With the X Premium, there really isn't a lot that's missing that you would find on other bikes, so there isn't a lot of other hidden costs associated with it. It's still a budget bike at $17.99, but it's not budget because it's missing features. Electric sells a suspension seat post on their site for $90, which would somewhat make up for the lack of rear suspension. It's not a necessity for everyone, and I don't feel that the one that they offer looks that great for the asking price. If you're going to spend the extra cash on a new seat post, I'd probably just get a cheap one from Amazon for $20 to $30 if you want something that will get the job done. It won't have electric printed on the side, but it would probably provide about the same comfort. If you want something with decent quality, however, I'd recommend at least getting the Centaur SB12 for around $100. Bucks. Not much more expensive than the electric seat post, but much better. If you're planning on riding at night, then I would definitely invest in a better headlight. External headlights are a great option, something bright and rechargeable. This goes for most e-bikes and isn't specific to electric. The headlights most e-bike companies provide are pretty subpar in general, so I wouldn't count it as a con against the X Premium itself. All in all, the Electric X Premium looks like a really great deluxe e-bike in the affordable e-bike market. It has decent, not great, but acceptable components and a reasonable price of $17.99. Electric now has a mama bear, baby bear, and papa bear thing going on with their current lineup. Most companies in general try to provide a good, better, best product line without overwhelming the customer with too many options while not frustrating them with too little of a selection. I predict there won't be any other new major releases from Electric for at least a while now. Or at the very least, they might refresh the XP 2.0 with maybe a 3.0 update on its components. But I have a feeling that they were probably more focused on designing and releasing the XP Lite in this X Premium than working on an overhaul of the XP 2.0. But who knows? I don't get paid for saying any of this, and Electric doesn't even know I exist. So I'm not partnering with them in any way. These are just my own thoughts and opinions. I do hope that this video was able to provide some useful information about the X Premium and possibly helped out some of you out there to decide whether or not it's the right e-bike for you. Please drop a like on this video and maybe leave a comment. If you want to see more videos like this, then please consider subscribing. And as always, thank you for watching.